All right, so this is gonna be just a quick video of how we fill out um, the pieces that you need to know and have memorized eventually of the unit circle. So let's start by talking about what the unit circle is. So the unit circle, unit means one. So the unit circle means I have a circle with a radius uh, of one. And this circle is centered at the origin. So if I have um, a coordinate plane here, my circle is centered at the origin. And all of these radii that I draw are all equal to one. And so what it was helpful for you to know is what these cardinal points are. So cardinal points means I'm talking about like if you move just, you know, east, north, west, and south, what those points are. So if I zoom back out and look at my um, unit circle here, I would like for you to fill out those points. And they are, because the radius is one, one, zero, zero, one. Whoa, that was fun. Negative one, zero and zero, negative one. And if you need to pause the video for a second to make sure you understand where those coordinates are coming from, please do so. Okay, now let's talk about degrees. Um, if I was to ask any of you about the degrees of a circle, I think all of you would agree that um, the entire circle, goodness me, uh, that the entire circle has 360 degrees in it. Uh, and so our question is, how do we find all these other different pieces? And um, we're gonna first, we're gonna count by 30s, and then we're gonna go back and fill in and count by 45s. Okay, so now that you have those written down, because you will need those reminders, I promise, um, let's zoom out and look at our circle. Um, I believe the directions say we can put degrees on the dashed line, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, it is important that you know about the unit circle, so you might wanna add this to the bottom down here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do this. Um, your start is over here on the right-hand side, and we count counterclockwise. Why? Because math. Um, if you remember, that's how your quadrants go, so that may make a little bit of sense to you. All right, so we're gonna count by 30s, and um, I'm gonna start at zero, because that's where we're starting, and I will count by 30s on all of these, um, let me actually highlight this in a different color, I'm gonna count by 30s on all of these lines. Notice that these break um, the circle into equal sections. So if I count by 30s on all of those lines, I will have 0, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. Now that pause right there, that should make sense to you that this is 180 because we're halfway around the circle. And then we should get 210, 240, 270, 300, uh, 330. And we should end where we started back at 360 degrees. All right, now we're gonna fill in um, the missing ones by 45s. So these other lines right here that we've skipped over count by 45s. And if you notice, they're like right in the middle of two other numbers. So some of you may even just say, what's in the middle of 30 and 60? Um, those angles are 45, this is 135, 225, and 315. All right, that's it for degrees. Um, we are now going to go back and do the radians. Okay, so if I look at radians, um, the definition of a radian comes from the circumference of a unit circle, and I can explain that more in class. But what you need to know right now is that a full circle is two pi radians. This is a full circle. And we are going to do the same kind of idea where we're going to count by one and then the other. So first, we're going to count by um, pi over six, or you can think about that as one-sixth. And then we're gonna count by pi over four or one fourth. All right, so just like with degrees, make sure you have those little cheats down of what you're gonna count by. And let's go back up here and fill in our circle. Okay, so same idea. We're gonna start in the same place and we're gonna do the same kind of skip counting where we skip over um, those middle sections every time. So I will start with zero. My first one is one sixth. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. One sixth pi, two sixth pi. Sorry, I got to scoot this down. Um, three sixth pi, four sixth pi, 
5 6 pi. Notice I'm skipping over those these kind of awkward angles in the middle. Um, 6 6 pi. 7 6 pi. 8 6 pi. 9 6 pi. 10 6 pi. 11 6 pi and 12 6 pi. Now, you may notice that um, a lot of these simplify, and in fact, this last one should kind of verify to you, 12 over 6 pi is the same thing as 2 pi. And honestly, um, you can simplify, but I, I honestly don't unless a question asks me to in this moment, um, just because it shows me that I filled everything out. All right, so like I said, we need to go back and fill in um, these missing ones. Okay, so just to make sense of this, notice we have skipped this one, um, these kind of that are on the diagonals. So I told you we were going to count by one-fourths, but if you notice, these are unequal jumps, like from here to here and then here all the way to that second one, that's an unequal jump. Technically, and this happened on the last one too, technically we're counting on these um, cardinal directions as well, but we already know what those are, so we're going to skip over them. Um, and I will explain that to you in class tomorrow, but let's go ahead and just fill in these last ones. All right, so they are um, pi over 4. It will let me write. All right, pi over 4 or 1 fourth pi. You might prefer that 1 fourth pi just to match what we did, 1 fourth pi. And then I'm going to skip one because I'm skipping over the middle here, and that's going to lead me to 3 fourths pi. I'm going to skip one again. Then I'm going to be at 5 fourths pi. And then skip the bottom, and then I'll be at 7 fourths pi. So this is a pattern of odd numbers because I'm skipping those cardinal directions as I count. All right, so this is what you need to have filled out for notes tomorrow, um, and we will practice using this and um, just practice filling it out and understanding what all this means. But this is all you need to know right now.